last sighting of a tiger in Korea was reported in 1924, and the last leopard in 1970, according to official records on file. Even after these records, though, a few may have continued to live in Korea in isolation. We still do not know exactly how the very last tigers had died out. And today, Korea has become a place where tigers have disappeared. Something swift passes by. It is a sable, an animal that is not very well known. Because they are rarely seen by people. Maintaining balance with its long tail, it stoutly moves with its big paws, an expert at climbing trees. In this dense forest, they live in small groups of twos or threes. It is early dawn in the valley. Male mandarin ducks are hanging out in a flock. Spring, the breeding season for mandarin ducks, has come. The males are getting ready for the mating ritual about to start soon. The otter enjoys the greatest freedom in this valley. Completely adjusted to water, it is the top predator. The mother has nurtured her two pups well. They've grown big enough to become independent soon. The pups love playing in the water. Otters especially have great ties with their family members. The otter dominates areas under the water. Once the hunting ends, however, it returns to land to rest. As they are terrestrial animals, giving birth is only possible on land. Once they go inside the water, their ears and nostrils close automatically becoming perfectly suitable for underwater swimming.
A baby pup cries out anxiously. Swept away by the current, it must have become separated from its mother. If a pup strays too far to be heard, it often loses its mother. Fortunately, this pup is reunited with its mother. The three-member family continues with underwater hunting. The male mandarin ducks are still awaiting their potential mating partners. By sticking out its neck, he tries to attract females to mate. The single female amid the male crowd seems to be keeping an eye on them. Competition is aroused among the males. The strongest male of the flock gets selected by the female and becomes its mate. Tigers and leopards have disappeared from the Korean peninsula. With other predators gone, the sable has taken over as the top predator. It loves fruits like hardy kiwi and cherries. But when several sables come together, they can take down a single water deer. They are quick and fierce hunters. This is the sound that sables make. Using this sound, they send signals to collaborate during hunting. It is also an expression of intimacy. A truly strong contender has appeared. The boar boasts the greatest size in the forest, but it's a sensitive animal with high vigilance. Their sensitivity stems from the way they escaped tigers and leopards long ago. Now, it is only the humans that can take down these wild boars. They usually feast on starchy foods such as tree roots or fallen acorns. But they can eat anything that comes their way, like maggots, worms, and even insects. If a boar falters in seniority, it must wait for a while. Suddenly alarmed, the wild boars disappear into the forest. The mountains of Gangwon province near the civilian control line have almost no traces of humans. The long-tailed gorals live here.
the rocky cliff seems dangerous. This baby Goro, about a year old, seems accustomed to the rocky cliff. It's able to climb the cliff with ease. Their specially developed hoofs and great sense of balance make this possible. Spring is the season when gorals come down from the mountains. They come down to consume the leaves and grass. A goral usually gives birth to one offspring and raises it for about two years, taking it everywhere. The spring and summer of the forest are abundant seasons that allow gorals to fatten up. These gorals climb up the mountain in a rush. There are two of them. Showing off their skills, they race as if they're playing a game. They suddenly start chasing at a steep slope. It's a contest between the males to dominate the territory. It's rare for herbivores to compete for control of territories. Only after one hurts its leg does the competition end. The loser, in low spirits, is driven out. A raccoon appears among the rocks. It's currently raising a baby kit. Normally not picky about where it sleeps, once kits are born it finds a safe cave to protect its litter. Nighttime is when raccoons are active. This one seems to have found some food. It hurries to the cave where the kits are. Once a pair of raccoons mate, they stay together all their lives. If you notice one of them, its pair will certainly be somewhere near. As omnivores, 
They can eat anything. Today, they've decided on fish. With wolves and foxes gone, the raccoon is the only canid remaining. After their natural enemies and competitors disappeared, their population increased immensely. Due to its great adaptability, they can even eat dead fish or animal corpses. The raccoon has become a common animal you can see anywhere. A titmouse is bathing. This small spring is deep in the mountains. Birds come here to bathe. Many animals come here to quench their thirst. This spring is a resting spot for animals. This spring was created by an animal. It is the wild boar. Knowing that water seeps in, the boar has dug a hole, creating a spring. It is also the boar that maintains the spring. The mother boar leads its young with their stripes still evident, to replenish themselves with water. Even late at night, the spring has endless visitors. The badger is a regular that visits the spring very often. Once again, morning has come, awakening the forest. The sable is a typical forest animal, pursuing a variety of prey in the different seasons of the forest. Its radius of activity is wide and always on the run. It is usually running about and never walking. In the meantime, it rubs its back on a dead tree. This removes its loose fur while marking its territory.
the flying squirrel seems curious about the outside world. It lives in the hole of a paulonia previously dug by a woodpecker. Out of curiosity, it steps outside, then quickly returns home. Once night falls, nocturnal creatures in the woods start to appear. The flying squirrel seen during the day is active now too. The mother owl is focusing on its senses. It has hunted down a mouse. She feeds it to its owlet that is not capable of hunting yet. The mother owl needs some rest too. Through bathing, she relieves the stress from raising an owlet. Yet another guest visits the spring. It is a wildcat looking like a small leopard. With tigers and leopards gone, the wildcat is the only feline carnivore remaining in the Korean peninsula. It is a small-sized beast possessing sharp visual, auditory, and olfactory senses. Even in the dark, it is an outstanding hunter. Approaches its target silently. Instantly leaping, it succeeds in the hunt. Summer has come, a time when the mountains flourish with life. This is the nest of Hoopoo, a migratory bird. After being nurtured by their dedicated mother for two weeks in the nest, the young birds will be able to fly near the end of summer. A creature is hiding itself in the grass.
It's a wild animal that's very familiar to Koreans. The water deer is the darling of all wild animals in the Korean peninsula. Though they belong in the deer family, both the male and female lack horns. Males are distinguishable by their huge canine teeth, while the female is without them. They live everywhere, in the mountains, grasslands, and farms, but they especially like the water. They have great swimming skills, even able to swim across large rivers. This water deer seems very vigilant. It is together with its fawn. With its great breeding capacity, it gives birth to three to four fawns at once. To evade being seen by enemies, it hides one fawn at a time at different spots. The mother comes only to feed them. Most of the time, she's away. The water deer is significant, with water in its name. While chewing on a water lily leaf, it swims remarkably well. With the wetland, their original habitat, cultivated into farmland, they have been forced onto the mountains and fields. But truth be told, the water deer are hard to come across. They are very rare, especially outside the Korean peninsula. The roe deer belongs to the same family as water deer. Unlike the water deer, the male roe deer has small horns, as well as a white spot on its buttocks. With a slightly bigger body than the water deer, it dwells in the woods of highlands. It is hardly found anywhere besides Jeju Island. The otter seems to have caught quite a large fish. What territory does the otter cover? Though it is known to inhabit only clear waters, it's more precise to say it lives where fish are plentiful. That is because of the otter's big appetite. They consume in a day a tenth of its own body weight.
to maintain its body temperature in cold water for a long time. It must consume enough calories. The hunting must go on. On rainy days like this, the forest animals briefly take a pause. The sounds, smells, and colors of the forest have changed. while the rain starts to recede. It is now time to appease their hunger. Only the Korean long-tailed goral has a bounty of fur on its tail. Although they are also found in China and Russia, their population density is the highest in the Korean Peninsula. A badger stops by the abundant spring. The next visitor is a wildcat. The creatures no longer try to wait out the rain. No animal hesitates when it comes to alleviating its hunger. This is the only river in Korea that has maintained its original flow and form. The river and surrounding mountains are connected seamlessly, preserving its original nature. This is the area surrounding the DMZ. For a long time, barely anyone has stepped foot here. An entire family of hungry boars has emerged in search of food. A pack like this includes females and their piglets, along with young males around a year old. Fully matured males take off to lead independent lives. This male with a long mane is digging soil to find some grass roots. It reaches higher up the plains. 
it will likely come across another animal. It is a long-haired goral. They don't seem to care about each other at all. The goral feeds on grass while the boar continues to dig, so there is no need for competition. The midsummer sun beats down on the dense forest. How will the spring created by the boar remain intact through this heat? The badger still visits regularly. It comes at nighttime, too. But just then, the badger shoves its buttocks into the water. It seems to be defecating. This rascal seems to have done it quite a few times. The birds wouldn't know what had happened last night. The heat of the high noon scorches the mountains. The boar is in a great hurry. The spring turns into a cooling bathtub. A sable bathes in the spring as well. Thanks to the spring, the creatures can briefly escape the heat. After the rain, more springs are set up here and there for the boars to enjoy. What in the world has happened to this Korean pine tree? The foot of the tree has been hallowed as if an animal had done this on purpose. If it becomes more serious, it could be the end for the tree. Boars drop by the spring as much as they can.
By digging just 10 centimeters, they can feel the cooling air. Because of their thick layer of fat, they are prone to heat. Wow, the boar must be feeling great right now. By moving back and forth in the water, the boars can be rid of mites. It seems to be heading for its next destination. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is headed to that very pine tree. It claws at the bark with its teeth to find pine resin. The boar rubs resin all over its body. It is trying to get rid of the persistent mites. Of course, it is also scratching itself where it itches. The other boars are aware of this great remedy as well. season has changed once more. The birds from the north have flown in. They are here to weather the cold months. For these birds, the land of Primorsky in the north as well as the Korean Peninsula, are both homes. Ecologically, they are the same environment. When looking at Russia's Primorsky, you can imagine what Korea would have looked like before its development. With a similar natural environment of the same vegetation, Primorsky's nature has never been damaged due to development. The wild animals in Primorsky are like the ones in Korea. Most of these familiar animals live in the Korean peninsula too. But surprisingly, the population densities in Primorsky are not very high. For wildcats, raccoons, wild boars, and sables, their population densities are actually higher in Korea. Russia, it's hard to find a breed especially high in population. This indicates that a variety of species coexist, living in good balance and harmony. In Korea, the large population of wild boars is problematic. In Russia, they are just one of the many species. Meanwhile, there are species remaining in Primorsky that have gone extinct in Korea. A prime example is the Sika deer and the fox.
Despite being similar in ecosystem, why is Russia's nature much more balanced? It is because there is natural control. Because there is a strong and powerful predator, nature remains in subtle balance as no species is given special treatment. while South Koreans were oblivious to this fact. The peninsula's ecosystem slowly started to lose its equilibrium. With the natural control in absence, intervention by humans continued to rise. Some species became overpopulated while others went totally extinct. People ask what it would be like if tigers and leopards returned to the Korean peninsula someday. The lost land of tigers and leopards The return of tigers and leopards would signal the return of nature's balance and harmony. This is why we still dream of the return of tigers and leopards. <laughs>